Hey guys, it's Dr. May in disguise. How are you? So, um, well, today, um, a reason I'm dressed up is because we're talking about being a little silly. So why not, right? Uh, I thought we'd get in the mood a little bit. Um, Halloween's also coming, so it seemed like a kind of a good topic, a good transition here. Okay, so um, this is the third part of three for lesson five. So it started out with doing new behaviors, flexible mind varies. Then it talked about self-inquiry for um, new behaviors, okay? And now it's talking about being non-productive, silly, funny, and playful, okay? So sometimes part of your new behavioral repertoire is um, you know having a little more fun, okay? Especially if you tend to be a little bit more on the serious side. So we're gonna try to lighten it up today, okay? All right, well, this hat's a little silly for now, but maybe I'll change it up a little bit with my uh, turkey leg hat. Okay, so um, we're gonna start out with another self-inquiry practice, okay? So it's kind of getting us to reflect about, upon our own relationship with things like humor and play in our own life, okay? So um, it, we're gonna ask ourselves some questions and just kind of take the time to um, think about how it might apply to you, okay? You don't have to come up with any special answers, but just, um, let it uh, open your mind a little bit, okay? Here we go. Okay, so um, do you find yourself being competitive? Like is the only kind of recreational activities you enjoy ones that are competitive in nature? Like those women in the picture look very competitive with their arm wrestling, right? But do you tend to do only competitive sports or only competitive games or like need to really kind of win? You know, if I'm not winning, do I find the activity enjoyable, right? So how serious am I? about my recreational activities. Hmm. Okay, um, pre-planning, right? So if you are gonna have fun, you have to spend a lot of time in advance planning it out, all the little details about the event, right? So to what extent do the games, playtime, or recreational activities I engage in require pre-planning, right? So sometimes we could have fun and it's very spontaneous. Other kind of types of fun require more planning. So are we always picking stuff that needs a little bit more planning, okay? Um, so how often do I engage in recreation, relaxing or fun that does not require pre-planning or preparation, okay? Is it hard for me to be spontaneous sometimes and just have fun in a more natural way? Okay, um, guilt about leisure. Hmm, this one comes up quite a bit sometimes. I'm just gonna move myself here. Um, so have I ever been given feedback that I work too hard or need to relax? Mm, any hands going up over there? Uh, I know I can relate to that one. Um, do I find it hard to self-soothe, relax, or experience pleasure without guilt? Right? Sometimes we almost feel like we don't deserve it, or like if we're not working, we're lazy, right? Or we got to just like keep doing something productive or something bad's going to happen, whatever that means, right? It's hard to let go. To what extent do I believe it's immoral or selfish to engage in behaviors that are for pleasure and have no obvious productive value, right? It's, it's hard sometimes, right? Like we, we feel like it needs to be productive. It needs to be for something. It needs to be work-related, right? Really hard to let go. Um, to what extent do I believe that relaxing, playing, or recreation must be earned? Mm. So you have to work all day long really, really hard before you finally allow yourself to do something nice? right? So let's think about that, right? How often do we do that sometimes? Okay, so look at the picture I found. So the woman has a chance to be on a magic carpet ride, and she's vacuuming the carpet. Oh, right? It's hard to even enjoy it. Okay, so I'll call this one, what's so funny, right? So it's about understanding what, what we like, what what's makes it what's funny to us, right? So kind of exploring our sense of humor, right? So let's explore. So what do I find amusing? And what's so amusing about what I find amusing, <laughs> right? So what do I find funny and why? Um, what types of TV programs or movies do I find enjoyable or humorous? What kind of sense of humor do I have? Dry humor, a silly humor, right? Am I proud of what I watch? If not or always, what is that I might need to learn, okay? Are you embarrassed that you find certain things funny, <laughs> right? Or are you worried about what people would think of you if you like certain things? I don't know. Okay, all right, so passive aggressive humor, right? So sometimes 
you know, we, we sneak humor in there, but it's not just a joyful humor, right? There's a little bit of an edge to it. There's a little bit of an angry undertone or, you know, an aggressive undertone, right? So do I consider myself to possess a cutting sense of humor? What might that say about my social interactions? Like, how do I think people are reacting to that? Do they appreciate it? Am I trying to communicate something? Mm -hmm. Do I secretly pride myself on being able to make clever or barbed comments disguised as innocent jests? Mm. And what prevents me from being direct, right? So disguising it in humor is kind of indirect or passive aggressive um, interaction, right? So what makes it hard for me to be honest about how I feel? Okay, do I consider myself expert on the humorous put down or the niggle? <laughs> okay, um, do I like it when other people tease me? What might this tell me about my values, right? So can I dish it, but I can't take it, right? Am I okay with teasing other people, but I don't have much of a sense of humor if they start to put it back to me, right? So is that really fair? All right, let's think about that one. Okay, what about this one? Are you ever afraid to laugh, okay? How often do I laugh out of social obligation, right? Like if your boss or somebody in a position of power is laughing, do I feel obliged to try to laugh along even though I don't feel it's that funny? Um, am I the expert at the phony laugh? What might this mean, right? Am I being a little superficial with exhibiting humor? Um, how free do I feel to express, express pleasure or laugh in public, right? Do I ever hide expressions of laughter from others? How might that affect my relationships, right? Uh, sometimes we could be a little afraid of like letting loose a little bit, right? Like we wanna stay in control and laughing, laughing too loud or too hard or at all to be felt sometimes to be like, I'm losing control a little bit, right? So at certain times it, it could be uncomfortable, right? Um, and to what extent do I believe genuine laughter is even possible, right? Sometimes it's very hard for us to, you know, make it genuine or we constrict so much that it's hard to have a genuine laugh, right? But it is possible. Okay, so what about this one, being a jokester. So sometimes we like pride our, our sense of um, humor, you know, and that becomes part of our identity or part of our persona in, in public, right? So do I pride myself on being able to make other people laugh? How much time do I spend memorizing or rehearsing funny stories or anecdotes, right? Do I feel like the main way I relate to people is through trying to be funny, right? What am I afraid might happen if I didn't tell a joke, right? What if I stopped telling a joke and I wasn't funny anymore? Am I afraid people won't like me? Or like if I'm just being myself, that that won't be good enough. So I have to just put on this persona of being funny, right? So sometimes we're afraid to be ourselves, right? Um, do I ever feel like an imposter when telling someone a joke or funny story, right? Do I, am I realizing that like I'm trying too hard, right? To what extent do I use a joke to avoid something serious, right? So just like sometimes it could be used in a passive aggressive way to avoid being honest, Sometimes it, it could be used to cover up our honest feelings about something that might be a little bit more painful or serious, right? Um, and has this ever caused problems for me? What might be the downsides, right? So let's say, you know, if I cover up my, my real feelings, which might be a little more painful with humor, people may, may not realize how I feel. They may not be able to help me. You know, they may not be able to see my pain and might overlook me when I secretly would like to, to have some support, okay? Just for an example. Okay, so laughter. Um, how often do I find myself laughing at other people's jokes? And how often do I find myself laughing, chuckling, laughing, chuckling or giggling without trying to, right? Am I, am I able to be free about my laughter, right? Instead of constricted or phony about it, right? So um, that's part of being open, right? Allowing yourself to laugh when you do think it's funny. Okay, and final um, self-angry question is about silliness. I love that picture, I think it's so cute, right? Like probably a grandpa and his grandson. Um, when I hear the word silly, what types of thoughts, emotions, or images arise? Such as Dr. May with the little uh, turkey legs, right? Um, how often am I silly, okay? Can I be silly? And if not, what's preventing me, right? Because you have to let your guard down a little bit to be silly, right? You have to let loose and that could be a little scary. So what do I fear might happen if I were silly? Right? What if someone saw that side of me? What would they think? Who am I silly around if I am? And to what extent do I believe being silly is a silly thing to do? <laughs> okay. 
All right, so I hope this gets you to think a little bit, all right? All right, so now we're gonna move on to some suggestions for um, changing up, changing things up, being a little non-productive and a little silly, okay? Um, so if you find yourself being kind of like a hardworking, serious person, this could actually be a little bit of a challenge, right? So we kind of understand that. Um, but you could kind of create more fun enjoyment and relaxation and variety in your life by being a little bit more fun and silly and laughing and having a good sense of humor, okay? Um, so we could actually practice this and add this into our repertoire, like little bits at a time, okay? So it's actually possible to use this as a coping skill but, or like a, you know, just like a skill, okay? And I'm gonna give you some suggestions for things you could try to kind of shake things up a little bit, okay? So it could help to try something new and playful and or silly every day. Okay, you could kind of slot it into your uh, your schedule. Okay, so here's some suggestions from the manual, which are kind of fun to try, perhaps. So just to change things up, right? Try writing with the opposite hand, or try writing with both hands at the same time, like in that picture. Um, do things the opposite. Wear a watch in the opposite wrist, right? Put rings on different fingers than you're used to. Um, use a different kind of a pen or a different colored pen. Right, so just, just very small things to create a little bit of a change, a little variety. What if at dinner time, you sat at a different chair at the table? Or let's say you sat at a different place on the couch than you're used to sitting at, or in a board meeting, you sat in a different chair at, at work, right? Or at school, you sit in a different desk. Um, what if at a meal, you ate dessert first instead of your main meal first, okay? Switched it up. Um, what if you were kind of daring and at a fancy restaurant, you broke protocol, Instead of ordering something fancy, you ordered like the kids menu, <laughs> like burger and fries, okay? What if you took the risk and tried that? Um, and now this is from the manual, so maybe you could give it a try. I'm sure other people gave it a try. Order pizza on the phone and end the call with, remember, we never had this conversation. <laughs> okay, take a risk. All right, here we go. Um, another thing you could do, um, maybe not that wild, but you could wear different clothes, okay? wear something that you normally wouldn't wear, maybe a color or pattern you don't normally wouldn't wear, okay? If you're used to wearing pants, maybe wear a skirt or used to wearing flats, wear heels, something like that. Um, try a different hairstyle. Maybe, um, you know, you stay wearing your hair down, try putting it up, comb, it, comb the part the other way. Um, the book says, try talking to everyone wearing pink at a party. <laughs> kind of an interesting exercise, right? Um, try wearing a Hawaiian shirt, try wearing something backwards, you know, so just something silly to change it up. Okay, and you get to also change the way you consume media, right? So maybe watch a TV show that you don't normally watch or, um, or listen to a radio station you don't normally listen to. Um, you could um, try a different news station, God forbid, listening to the other political party, ooh. Um, <laughs> they suggest in the manual, watch TV, and repeat everything that's said in an Italian accent. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. I guess, I guess it might be fun. Um, you can do, some, do it with your kids, that might be fun too. Okay, um, let's see, I'll move myself here, drop, okay. So they suggest also, ask people to call you by a different name or nickname for a day. Well, let's say you went on vacation and um, you, know, you used to be calling Robert and um, you decided to ask people to call you Bob. What the heck, try something new, right? Um, do the exact opposite of what you normally would do in a situation. This is kind of like a George Costanza thing. Ever watch Seinfeld and he has that episode about the opposite? Do the opposite, right? Um, I don't know how, you, how to do this, but the manual suggests repeat every third word you say during a conversation with someone. It's kind of a brain twister, right? Walk backwards or communicate in mind. All right, reminds me of an improv class. That's why I, uh, I put that picture up there. Um, even things around the house, if you change up just the, the position of things and the way things look, right? So let's say you redecorated something, you, you changed the location of a picture. Sometimes I swap pictures, like I rotate pictures, um, put a piece of furniture in a different place or a different angle, um, try a different bedding, maybe get a new comforter for your bed. Um, when you drive to work or store or wherever you go, try taking a different route. Um, here's one that might be a little tough for us, right? Ask somebody the best way to do a household chore and do it their way for a week. Oof. <laughs> right? We're so used to doing it our way. It might be a little hard to do that, but that's maybe more of a challenge one. 
Okay, so those are some suggestions, right? So what if we tried something a little new every day, and we got a little more used to it, it might be a little less scary to do some bigger changes, right? To try a brand new behavior, or a brand new activity, okay? So um, I hope you guys a little fun with this. I know my little turkey legs had fun and, and my witch hat too, <laughs> okay? So um, don't be afraid to be silly and um, I'll see you next time for lesson six, okay? Bye everybody.